just a warning before we start. There is more copium in this video than there is opium in Afghanistan. So I'm just going to warn you, you might have a copium overdose and die of laughter. So I'm sure a lot of people are doing this, but I figured I'd give my takes. It's too funny to not cover. Sorry for how gorilla this looks, but I'm trying to avoid a copyright strike. So this is what Biden said a month ago. Um, and I think Biden's intelligence, his intellect, his deep insight into foreign policy was proven to be true. So let's say what Biden had to say. Your own intelligence community has assessed that the Afghan government will likely collapse. That is not true. Is it, can you please clarify what they have told you about whether that will happen or not? That is not true. They so, did not, they didn't. So where did they, where did they get that? So is Biden saying that the intelligence community lied to him? Like there's so many layers of just people lying and selling us bullshit. It's hard to know like who's even lying to who at this point. So did the, did the intelligence community lie to the public when they said that it wasn't going to collapse? Or did they lie to Biden when they said, no, the intelligence community told the public that, that it was going to collapse. What did they tell Biden? It wasn't going to collapse. And like, who's, who's, who's fooling who at this point? There's so many levels to this. I can't even follow the narrative anymore. So let's just continue. Did not reach that conclusion. So what is the level of confidence that they have that it will not collapse? The Afghan government and leadership has to come together. They clearly have the capacity to sustain the government in place. Uh, they clearly didn't. The question is, will they generate the kind of cohesion to do it? Not nope. A hundred percent nope. Not a question of whether they have the capacity. They have the capacity. They have the forces. They have the equipment. The question is, will they do it? And I want to make clear. This is such like a simplistic, materialist, neoliberal view of it. They have the equipment. I remember in one of Mark Stein's books, they talk about this at a length. And they, there's an old British expression from the colonial era. They may have numbers, but we have the Maxim gun, which was the first practical machine gun. And the Maxim gun only does you good if you can use the Maxim gun. That is, if you have the will to use it and you have the capability to use it and to maintain it. And the Afghan government doesn't didn't have the will to use any of the weapons, nor the, the ability to use any of them. So it's irrelevant. It's, it's better, I think, I forget if it was Tamerlane or who it was who said it's better to have a hundred men here than 10,000 men somewhere else. And it's better to have equipment that your forces can use and that works for you and that is effective than having the most advanced high tech thing. If all you can use effectively is crew surfaced weapons on the back of Humvee, uh, back of Humvees or Toyotas, that is better than a tank you can't use. And it's just like, oh, we gave them a bunch of this stuff. Yeah, but they're like retarded. They don't know how to use any of that shit. But I made clear to Ghani that we are not going to walk away and not sustain their ability to maintain that force. Whoa. We're not going <laughs> to. Let's do that again. I'm going to sustain. Clear. But I made clear to Ghani that we are not going to sustain walk away and not sustain their ability to maintain that force. We are. We're going to also work to make sure we help them in terms of everything from food necessities and other things in, in, in the region. But, but food necessities and other things in the region. What the fuck does that even mean? What does he mean region? Does he mean like food for Tajikistan? Does he mean like Kabul? Like what the fuck is he even talking about? There is not a conclusion that, in fact, they cannot defeat the Taliban. I believe the only way there's going to be, this is now Joe Biden, not the intelligence community. The only way there's ultimately going to be peace and security in Afghanistan is that they work out a modus vivendi with the Taliban and they make a judgment as to how they can make peace. 
and the likelihood there's going to be one unified government in Afghanistan controlling the whole country is highly unlikely. Well, I mean, he was wrong about that, too. <laughs> there is one unified government in Afghanistan controlling the whole country. It's the Taliban. Literally, they control probably more of the country now than they did back in 2001. That's fucking amazing. Let's watch this As to how they can make peace. And the likelihood there's going to be one unified government in Afghanistan controlling the whole country is highly unlikely. Except there is. But we have talked to your own top general in Afghanistan, General Scott Miller. He told ABC News, the conditions are so concerning at this point that it could result in a civil war. So if Kabul falls to the Taliban, what will... I mean, it wasn't a civil war. They just collapsed like a house of cards. So I guess... He was right for saying that there was no civil war. What the United States do about it? Look, you've said two things. One, that if it could result in a civil war, that's different than the Taliban succeeding. How is it not a civil war? How is the last 20 years, like, I, I can't tell if these people are, like, genuinely mentally deficient or, like, what their fucking deal is. To be perfectly honest, I don't like, I frankly just don't really get it. Um, what else can you call, let me look up what the definition of a civil war is. Let's see what Miriam Webster has to say. Uh, a civil war is a conflict between groups within a single country. Um, however, in, in a civil war, the country has become divided and factions within the country are battling each other. So the last 20 years has been a civil war. How can there be a civil war starting if it... Number one. Number two, the question of what will be done is going to be implicated, it's going to implicate the entire region as well. There's a number of countries that have a grave concern about what's going to happen in Afghanistan relative to their security. The question is, how much of a threat to the United States of America and to our allies is whatever results in terms of a government or an agreement? That's when that judgment will be made. What the fuck does that mean? Mr. President, some, some Vietnamese veterans see echoes of their experience uh -oh. in this withdrawal in Afghanistan. Do you see any parallels between this withdrawal and what happened in Vietnam with some people feeling... With None the whatsoever. Zero. What you had is you had entire brigades breaking through the gates of our embassy. Six, if I'm not mistaken. The Taliban is not the, South, the North Vietnamese Army. They're not, they're not remotely comparable in terms of... I, I like how he thought it was the South Vietnamese capability. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. It is not at all comfortable. Wow. <laughs> what a fucking doofus. Like, yeah, it's not comparable to South Vietnam because the South Vietnamese government fought to the last. Sure, they, they lost, but there's a difference between losing and giving up with zero fight. Like, they went on fighting for, like, I think two to four years in, after the U.S. mostly pulled out of the country. And, uh, yeah, so the Taliban suck in terms of their, like, because North Vietnam had aircraft, they had tanks, they had artillery, and that kind of stuff. The Taliban doesn't have that stuff. So what you're saying is it's not like Vietnam because the government you set up is so shitty and so incompetent that they lose to the equivalent of like three North Vietnamese divisions. Let's just listen to that nonsense again. Some, some Vietnamese veterans see any care. Zero. What you had is you had entire brigades breaking through the gates of our embassy. Six, if I'm not mistaken. The Taliban is not the, South, the North Vietnamese army. They're not, they're not remotely comparable in terms of capability. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. It is not at all comfortable. 
Mr. President, how serious was the corruption among the Afghanistan government to this mission failing there? Well, first of all, the mission hasn't failed yet. There is uh, in Afghanistan, um, in all parties, there's been corruption. The question is, can there be an agreement on unity of purpose? What is the objective? For example, it started off, there were going to be negotiations. So I think Uncle Joe has a good point here. I mean, he said we're not going to see uh, helicopters above American embassies. So, like, I, I don't know what this is. The um, helicopter up the, above the embassy. <laughs> what a fucking retard. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, you know what this whole thing is? There is a video I have put together that, or a sound clip I put together that I think exemplifies the lowest, lamest form of cope. This is what Biden's saying. Trust the plan. The earth is flat. Patriots are in control. Trust the plan. The earth is flat. Patriots are in control. So let's go look at, um, uh, where's the whitehouse.gov? Uh, let's see here. So I forget if this was it. Uh, we were never there to nation build. Uh, and it's right responsibility to, of the Afghan people alone to decide the future and how they want to run their country. Then why did you give? Why did you give? Okay, so let's just look at this because these two sentences don't even go together. We did not go to Afghanistan to nation build. And it's the right and responsibility of the Afghan people alone to decide their future and how they want to run their country. Together with our NATO allies and partners, we have trained and equipped over three, nearly 300,000 current serving members of the military of the Nash, Afghan National Security Forces and many beyond that who are no longer serving. Add to that hundreds of thousands more Afghan National Defense and Security Forces trained over the last two decades. <clears throat> so we didn't go there the nation build but we trained hundreds of thousands of people to nation build. Huh? I like it's, it's the same. It's like the next paragraph. Let's see here. We provided our Afghan partners with all the tools. Um, we're going to continue providing funding and equipment uh, and we'll ensure they have the capacity to maintain their air force. Uh, well, I, I guess they didn't have the capacity to maintain their air force. Also, I don't know if there's supposed to be a, a space there or not. Um, so, I mean, that's, let me see here. Where is it? I got the Taliban. There is the infamous, uh, quote somewhere here. Uh, no, it's not. Um, do you trust handing over the, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so, I, the, it's gonna be fine, guys. It's gonna be fine. Um, so, once again, what this whole thing is, is just them saying, and I know people hate sound clips, but I put this together, so I want to play it again. Trust the plan. The earth is flat. Patriots are in control. Exactly. Okay, so let's look at today's comments, because this is going to be fucking amazing. Let's see what Biden has to say. Today, for the unfolding situation in Afghanistan, the developments that have taken place in the last week, and the steps we're taking to address the rapidly evolving events. My national security team and I have been closely monitoring the situation on the ground in Afghanistan and moving. Apparently not. You literally said like three days ago it's going to take them a month and that here's how Bernie can still win. We quickly to execute the plans we had put in place to respond to every constituency, including and contingency, including the rapid collapse we're seeing now. But you said it wasn't going to happen. I mean, I showed the clip of him saying that, that it wasn't going to happen. I'll speak more in a moment about the specific steps we're taking. But I want to remind everyone how we got here and what America's interests are 
in Afghanistan. We went to Afghanistan almost 20 years ago with clear goals. Get those who attacked us on September 11, 2001, and make sure Al-Qaeda could not use Afghanistan as a base from which to attack us again. We did that. No, you really didn't. We severely degraded Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. We never gave up the hunt for Osama bin Laden, and we got him. That was a decade ago. Our mission in Afghanistan... So why are you still here? Afghanistan was never supposed to have been nation-building. It was never supposed to be creating a unified, centralized democracy. But it was. Our only vital national interest in Afghanistan remains today what it has always been, preventing a terrorist attack on America's homeland. I've argued for many years that our mission should be narrowly focused on no. counterterrorism, not counterinsurgency or nation building. What the fuck? Like, I don't know. That's why I opposed the surge when it was proposed in 2009 when I was vice president. I'm going to press X to doubt it. I don't feel like going back and, and that's why as president, it. It. I'm adamant we focus on the threats we face today in 2021, not yesterday's threats. Today, the terrorist threat has metastasized well beyond Afghanistan. Al-Shabaab in Somalia, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, Al-Nusra in Syria, ISIS attempting to create a caliphate in Syria and Iraq, and establishing affiliates in multiple countries in Africa and Asia. These threats warrant our attention and our resources. We conduct effective counterterrorism missions against terrorist groups in multiple countries where we don't have permanent military presence. If necessary, we'll do the same in Afghanistan. We've developed counterterrorism over the horizon capability. What the fuck does that mean? Is he referencing like over the horizon? Oh, I guess that's the drone strikes. That will allow us to keep our eyes firmly fixed on the direct threats to the United States in the region and act quickly and decisively if needed. Mm -hmm. When I came into office, I inherited a deal that President Trump negotiated with the Taliban. Under his agreement, U.S. forces would be out of Afghanistan by May 1, 2021, just a little over three months after I took office. U.S. forces had already drawn down during the Trump administration from roughly 15,500 American forces to 2,500. Nice job, Biden. Bet you wish that you didn't win that election by completely legitimate means now. Um, <laughs> Trump did one final troll. <laughs> one final troll. 500 troops in country. And the Taliban was at its strongest militarily since 2001. The choice I had to make as your president was either to follow through on that agreement. Correction, as your anti-president. Agreement, or be prepared to go back to fighting the Taliban in the middle of the spring fighting season. In the middle of the spring fighting season? What the fuck does that mean? There would have been no ceasefire after May 1. There was no agreement protecting our forces after May 1. There was no status quo of stability without American casualties after May 1. There was only a cold reality of either following through on the agreement to withdraw our forces or escalating the conflict and sending thousands more American troops back into combat in Afghanistan, lurching into the third decade of conflict. You would know about I stand Joe. squarely behind my decision. After 20 years, I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. That's why we're still there. I mean, there was. It was literally right afterwards. But fair enough. We were clear-eyed about the risk. We planned for every contingency, but... I always promised the American people that I would be strict. No, you didn't. That was the reason why you were there for 20 years, is you didn't plan for any contingency. Great with you. The truth is, 
this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. So, yeah, I mean, but Joe, what does that say about you? And what does that say about your government? And what does that say about the people advising you? Like, I'm just some random asshole on the internet with an undergrad degree who reads Wikipedia. And I was able to figure out, like, um, that this, I was able to, like, look at the map and see how fast the Taliban was going and see how fast uh, Afghani divisions were surrendering without a fight. And I was able to figure out that it was going to fall in a matter of days. You couldn't apparently. Okay, so the two options we have here. So we have two options here. The first one is literally everybody surrounding him is completely retarded. They're all they're all just really fucking stupid. They have more information than any of us can ever dream of. And it's all completely worthless. They're completely incompetent. They can't do basic mathematics. They can't see, oh, the Taliban went from controlling 25 to 85 percent of the country in like two weeks. Maybe that's like a sign that something bad's happened. So that's option one. Option two is they knew that and they just lied. And I, I don't know which cope is better. That is it better to be like a pathological liar who completely misrepresented everything to the American people in an extremely transparent way? Like we watched the previous video. He claimed that it's not true. It's not true. It's not going to collapse. And then it did. And everything he said was a lie. So is, is that the cope? Like, so, so are we going with... Literally, the entire American intelligence establishment are completely retarded, and they have no idea what they're doing, and they're dumber than just some random person posting on 4chan, or B, they're, they're um, everybody's just lying, or they're lying to the president, and they're the only person he's lying to. They're telling the public the truth, but they're telling the president a lie. None of these are good scenarios, people. None of these are good scenarios. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. If anything, the developments of the past week reinforced that ending U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan now was the right decision. Yeah, uh, Joe actually makes a good point. I'll credit where credit's due. American troops cannot and should not be fighting in a war and dying in a war that Afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves. We spent over a trillion dollars. We trained and equipped an Afghan military force with some 300,000 strong. Yeah, that you said was going to kick the Taliban's ass. We saw the clip. We saw the transcript. You can't come and pretend that this is a, a surprise. Incredibly well equipped. A force larger in size than the militaries of many of our NATO allies. We gave them every tool they could need. We paid their salaries. Provided for the maintenance of their air force. Wait, what? You paid their salaries? I haven't heard this one. Fuck me. No wonder. Okay, well, I think that explains everything. I think that explains literally everything you need to know about the Afghan army. I haven't seen anybody mention that. They paid their salaries. Well, that's why they joined, to get your money. And you were stupid enough to give it to them. Of course. Something the Taliban doesn't have. Taliban does not have an Air Force. And they how provided much close air them? support. Mm -hmm. We gave them every chance to determine their own future. We could not provide them was the will to fight for that future. There's some very brave and capable Afghan special forces units and soldiers. But if Afghanistan is unable to mount any real resistance to the Taliban now, there is no chance that one year, one more year, five more years, or 20 more years, the U.S. military boots on the ground would have made any difference. Here's what I believe to my core. It is wrong to order American troops 
to step up when Afghanistan's own armed forces would not. The political leaders of Afghanistan were unable to come together for the good of their people, unable to negotiate for the future of their country when the chips were down. They would never have done so while U.S. troops remained in Biden literally said there that the uh, leaders of Afghanistan got belted. In Afghanistan, bearing the brunt of the fighting for them. And our true strategic competitors, China and Russia, would love nothing more than the United States to continue to funnel billions of dollars in resources and attention into stabilizing Afghanistan indefinitely. When I hosted President Ghani and Chairman Abdullah at the White House in June, and again when I spoke by phone to Ghani in July, we had very frank conversations. We talked about how Afghanistan should prepare to fight their civil wars after the U.S. military departed to clean up the corruption in government so the government could function for the Afghan people. We talked extensively about the need for Afghan leaders to unite politically. They failed to do any of that. I also urged them to engage in diplomacy, to seek a political settlement with the Taliban. This advice was flatly refused. Mr. Ghani insisted that the Afghan forces would fight but obviously, he was wrong. So I'm left again to ask of those who argue that we should stay. How many more generations of America's daughters and sons would you have me send to fight Afghanistan's civil war? And Afghan troops will not. How many more lives, American lives, is it worth? I thought there was no civil war. You said there was no civil war. How many endless rows of headstones at Arlington National Cemetery? I'm clear on my answer. Which is why you started the war in Libya. I will not repeat the mistakes we've made in the past. Or the one in Syria. Mistake of staying and fighting indefinitely. Down on a civil war in a foreign country. Of attempting to remake a country through the endless military deployments of U.S. forces. Those are the mistakes we cannot continue to repeat because we have significant vital interest in the world that we cannot afford to ignore. I also want to acknowledge how painful, AKA Israel. painful this is to so many of us. The scenes we're seeing in Afghanistan, they're gut-wrenching, particularly for our veterans, our diplomats, humanitarian workers, for anyone who has spent time on the ground, working to support the Afghan people. Americans have fought and served in the country. This is deeply, deeply personal. This is as long as anyone. I've been throughout Afghanistan during this war valley. I've traveled to influence and our humanitarian aid. We'll continue to push for regional diplomacy and engagement to prevent violence and instability. We'll continue to speak out for the basic rights of the Afghan people, of women and girls just as we speak out all over the world. The men, though, they fuck them. They can be beheaded. I've been clear. Human rights must be the center of our foreign policy, not the periphery. But the way to do it is not through endless military deployments. But that's what it was. That's why this thing was a shit show. Like, you tried to make human rights the center. with our diplomacy, our economic tools, and rallying the world to join us. Now, let me lay out the current mission in Afghanistan. I was asked to authorize, and I did, 6,000 U.S. troops to deploy to Afghanistan for the purpose of assisting in the departure of U.S. and allied civilian personnel from Afghanistan and to evacuate our Afghan allies and vulnerable Afghans to safety outside of Afghanistan. Our troops are working to secure the airfield and to ensure continued operation of both the civilian and military flights. We're taking over air traffic control. We have safely shut down our embassy and transferred our diplomats. 
our, di our diplomatic presence is now consolidated at the airport as well. Over the coming days, we intend to transport out thousands of American citizens who have been living and working in Afghanistan. We'll also continue to support the safe departure of civilian personnel, the civilian personnel of our allies who are still serving in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Operation Allies Refugee, which I announced back in July. Operation Allied Re Allies Refugee. That is the most g -slur name for an operation I have ever heard. Has already moved 2,000 Afghans who are eligible for special immigration visas. The U.S. military will provide assistance to move to limited scope and focused in its objectives. Okay, well, I think that covers it. So that is more copium than is grown in the than opium is grown in the Golden Triangle. I think I proved here. I mean, other people have done it, but beyond a shadow of a doubt, how much of a clusterfuck this was, how much they lied about this. Either everybody involved with this is completely retarded, or they're just fucking horrendous liars, and we're fucked either way.